these pictures, these images, these sounds, these words, these, this music that you're hearing, it's being ingrained in your brain and it's, it's making your reactions different whether you recognize it or not. We are so intricately connected with the media at all times. It can feel like the negative just is like surrounding them and it can feel very overwhelming sometimes. And we focus so much on, you know, what's going on, the negativity, we can get pulled into that and feel helpless and feel hopeless. Remember Genocide and environmental destruction. Look at all this fear being televised. Look at all this fear being televised, being shoved into our already broken hearts. Received instantaneously on the gram. Uh oh, I uh, hold up, excuse me for a few hours. I got a notification. With Media Done Responsibly, we look at ways of being conscious consumers, creators, and advocates of media that reflects our humanity. Our pillars are media literacy, media production, and media justice advocacy and those pillars are the foundation of the actual curriculum. To be media literate means to have a deeper level of understanding of all the media that you're consuming. It's the ability to be able to analyze the media that you are looking at, to be able to think critically and evaluate that media. But think about, think about what you're Think about the movement of that. Think about the camera angles. It's very much important to the they're learning how they relate to the media. They are challenging some of the assumptions that they may have grown up with or they may have just had coming in. Getting really clear on what matters to me, what is important to me as an issue to address, and how is it playing out in the media now, and how might I want to create some change in this area? So about 80% of Americans have access to the internet. <laughs> And because of that, like around 30% of online time is spent on social media. One of the big things that's talked about in our generation now is Instagram versus reality. And a great example is over here. You have the picture the girls posted and how the girls looked when they got up from posing for the picture. And today we're going to be talking to you about representation in Hollywood. From the media literacy looking at what the problem is, they then develop a solution. And their solution is going to come in the form of a media production activity. So how am I going to create content that is meaningful and helps to show what I don't yet see? And what I mean by that is, if we're talking about hypersexual images in the media, and we're talking about maybe the way a commercial sells a hamburger, right? And if that hamburger sale is hypersexual, it looks like it has nothing to do with eating a hamburger, how can I rewrite that? So there are different types of things that they can do. You guys are gonna come up with a premise that deals with mental health properly in your work. What's that for an example of a premise, is a superhero fights a crime while, while also struggling with his bipolar disorder. His bipolar disorder isn't his power, it's just something that he lives with and has to deal with. The goal is to have them utilize the skills and the tools that they have available to them already. I would like you to make a little drawing or a poster, and in 15 minutes, we'll have you guys present this to the class. Hi, Robin, come up, write your favorite movie on the board. Looking at your top movies and what kind of representation they have in them, um, specifically Asian representation, and it's not a play on you guys, but most of them do not have Asian representation. We're playing Jeopardy, Asian representation edition. We're only going to do.
So we teach them how to use the tools that they have to create some really engaging content. Content that they can also use to advocate for a cause. Um, there's a definite lack of diversity and people who are being shown and stories that are being told in media. And that can have larger effects on the way that individuals see themselves and the way that the public sees the people who are being represented. And then they go into an advocacy campaign. And now that you guys have your poster done, um, we, we would like you guys to take a picture of it and post it online with the hashtag better mental health. Advocacy as defined by media that responsibly is the act of supporting or recommending a cause of action with the intention of creating change. So these are some examples of the types of advocacy that can be done. We have e-petitions, letter writing. I'm going to pass some papers out and I'm going to have you guys directed to the president of the production company. And I really just kind of talk about the representation you guys want to see. So a little bit about Media Done Responsibly. It's an organization on our campus that focuses on educating specifically younger generations about what media is, how media can be used for good or bad. The real key of the curriculum has been to make sure that it is very engaging for both our students and for the young people that we're working with in the community. We have currently in Los Angeles County, we have over 30 partner schools and three universities that we've worked with. And they have been enormous in terms of opening their arms to us. The way that they pour themselves into this, they pour their heart, their research, their time into this, and then they're able to see in real time the impact that it's having on the lives of these young people. It was really powerful. We are talking about like how we would like to see young black ladies as doctors mm -hmm. instead of like like more professional roles yeah, that they do on yeah. the streets and stuff so yeah like we would like to see um a young lady as a doctor she mm -hmm. got two kids she got a good <laughs> credit school academia <laughs> becomes a critical springboard for them to get their feet in the door and to have some type of agency when it comes to going back to their communities, starting businesses, being entrepreneurs, being educators, being activists. I mean, I really can't say enough about that as a foundation. It can absolutely be transitioning to the English curriculum, to social studies, to history. I mean, it's all germane. I mean, when you're looking at cultural propaganda in mainstream media, how it impacts people's lived experiences, I mean, it can be rolled out in numerous ways and applied in every different sector in the nation. We've had people across the country say, how can we access your curriculum? And before now, we haven't really had a way to do that. It's been very Los Angeles based and um, really about the students that we can reach right here where we are. I came across Michelle Hawley's phone number and her information here at Cal State Los Angeles. I told her about what I wanted to do, what we had started a little bit in Cal State Northridge, but what I really wanted to expand upon in terms of uh, providing mentors to high school students. And she said, that's great, let's do it. And I'm so glad that we did because 10 years later, here we are continuing to do this. And so I just want to thank you if you can come yeah. up. As we're growing, that's one of the things that we are getting ready to offer, the opportunity to replicate its success in other places. She inspires faculty, she inspires students, to remind us about what our work is really about. Mm -hmm. Having an impact, right? Making change. It's about people and it's about humanizing the work we do. So it becomes a community, it really does. There are um, usually key students who, once they've gone through the program, are really invigorated. A big part of the program that I hope all of you all are able to experience is being able to stay connected and to stay in touch even after you graduate. Mafia members disguised as red, white, and blue democracy, conflicted and diluted information going on I just want to say that I continue to work with NVR because I believe in the work and the importance of educating other people about uh, social issues. It's what happens between people that is the influence of the media, and I learned that from Chanel. 
I learned that from being part of MDR. I believe that the work we're doing right now is more critical now than ever. Even though the media landscape has changed quite a bit since we first started, and even because the media landscape has changed so much since we started, it's very critical. Understanding that we are so intricately connected with the media at all times, and it's influencing us whether we're conscious about it or not, is something that's really important to understand. And it's important to understand the impact that it's having so that we're not just kind of numbly going through our day-to-day -day life, being impacted by something without making conscious decisions about our interaction with it. In the word, communication is communion, uh, union. So communication can either be used to put down another person or to tell them they're wrong and, and separate from each other, or it could be a way what it's, what it's truly meant for, which is to unify and to connect, to share our expressions and our truth with one another and come to wholesome understandings of uh, ourselves and the relationship we have with one another.